I'd like you to join me today at the Caird Library at the National Maritime Museum to look at a number of documents by way of introduction to um, this year's International Slavery Remembrance Day. The documents I want to share with you today, I think really expose the nature, the genuine depravity of the trade in human lives across the Atlantic between the uh, 16th and uh, 19th centuries. This is a copy of the Jamaica Mercury from uh, September 1779. Now, common with most newspapers, it has items and articles that would be familiar. Uh, it has general news of the wars of the world. It has lottery information, finding out who is lucky. Um, there are also advertisements for parcels of land for sale. There are advertisements for the renting of lands, the import of tea, Spanish language tuition. Amongst all of this, you also see advertisements for people. You see people for sale, for example, to be sold at, public, at the public um, at Mr. Pitcairn's Tavern in Spanish Town to the highest and best bidder on Thursday, the 16th of September, 20 seasoned Negroes. That's their description of the 20 lives. 20 seasoned Negroes belonging to the estate of Patrick Blake Esquire. Those two words tell us a lot, seasoned Negroes. Obviously, they're people of African origin, but by season, they're disclosing the fact that these are people who have, who have been uh, broken into a life of enslavement. They are no longer um, actively African in either their patterns of socialization um, or their belief systems, and they are accustomed to being enslaved. That is the process of seasoning. But, and this is what really catches my attention, you have adverts, advertisements for uh, runaway people, for enslaved people who have made what must have been the most extraordinary decision of their lives to run away, to go for their own freedom. All sorts of people make this decision. All sorts of people summon the courage, such as this woman by the given name of Flora, of course no surname, Flora, who is described as a North American Negro wench. And uh, she has run away on Sunday the 30th of May, uh, described as being well known in this town, being Kingston, I imagine. And whoever secures said wench and delivers her to the subscriber shall receive two pounds, 15 shillings reward. Page after page, you've got sharper hair, a Negro boy, five foot four inches, Pompey, more Greco-Roman names, a uh, runaway, a Negro boy, speaks very little English and is marked on one shoulder, but uh, scarcely perceivable. Again, rewards are given for all of these people being returned. Joe, um, a Negro man of the Ibo people or the Ibo country, again, marked or branded on one sh shoulder. A large number of these people, and they are mostly young, seem to make it away. They seem to vanish either into the mountains, into maroon communities. Um, but this sort of information I think is really interesting and it's a side of enslavement which is not really looked at very much. The fact that so many people do take it upon themselves to create their own freedom, to actually liberate themselves, such as Jack Hare, who has run away a Negro boy of the Congo country, interesting description, 15 or 16. He has no brand mark, Lucky Jack. He speaks tolerable good English and suppose that he's taken the Clarendon Road, being well acquainted with the parish and of course two pounds, 15 shillings reward for him. But if you look at the initial date at which Jack ran away, he ran away in July. So he's been on the run for literally two months. And we don't know ultimately what happened to Jack, but we know that there was a set of communities, sufficiently large communities of runaways um, 
that, uh, in which he could have crafted a new life for himself. Join us at the National Maritime Museum Greenwich for the commemoration of the International Slavery Remembrance Day on the 23rd of August between 11 and 5 o'clock.